You just tuned in to Hip Hop and Political Factors. So, this is your girl Mocha Jasmine Johnson, and you just tuned in to Mocha Speaks. This is my first live recording, and I'm here with Superfly, Mariah Parker. She is not only a music artist, she's not only a MC, but she's also commissioner of Athens Clark County. So we're so, for District 2. District 2. Yeah. I like what you're doing over there in District 2. I saw you drop a uh, newsletter. Yeah, I'm trying to like create means within the community for people to communicate with their neighbors, let people know what's going on, as well as like building capacity for social movement within that district by like having our independent press where we can speak our own stories, tell our own stories, and control our own narrative, which is really important. I like important. that, because you know in Athens we always rely on black people. We rely people on... People black people over there. Yeah, and they, exactly. Yeah. So they don't even know what's going on. And yeah. we always say, we need a black newspaper. I know we have um, Zebra, but that's, you know, it's, you know, it's a good paper. But the person who touches need. about, we go door to door and hand deliver them and sit and talk to people about the contents and uh, solicit new ideas for stories to get people talking about what's on their minds and what they want to see in the discussion and like the discourse. Oh, so, wow. so that is like, that's the important part. That's how we're like building the movement in District 2. Oh, too. go ahead, girl. So basically, you're knocking on doors, you're yeah. listening to people's stories, yeah. and then you're seeking ways to put it in the paper, like put in the paper and right. address the issue or bring awareness to what's going yeah. on in that district. Exactly. Provide an open forum that's available to anybody regardless of what kind of technologies they're comfortable with, they're using their home, you know, and, and literacies, you know, having that conversation with someone in case, you know, they you know, pick up a piece of paper and like, what is all this they're talking about? So, it's, uh, yeah, it's about it's about building the movement, it's about building capacity for some social change. I know you're big on literacy because um, yeah. you're getting a PhD. I am. And the topic is linguist. It's a language, language, language right? and literacy education. Okay, yeah. so that's dope. Um, it is dope. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to, I know you're an MC, so it makes you even sharper, but with that degree, do you intend on teaching or do you intend on... What do you intend on doing with it? Because I could see you even, you know, just being an artist, speaking, and even with this newspaper right now, mm -hmm. and it's a big thing for you. So yeah. what do you plan on being with that? So moment by moment within my degree process, I try to look at ways that I can leverage the resources of the university to create social change. So for example, when you're affiliated with the university, it's easier for you to get grant funding to do research projects. Okay. And that's those are resources you can bring back into the community to fund projects, say, like after-school programs, for like literacy clinics and things like that. So I'm constantly looking for ways that I can just make my scholarship benefit my advocacy. Wow. So right now, what that's turning into is a after-school program at Cedar Shoals for student activists helping build capacity there for them to advocate for themselves at City Hall within the, you know, the, with the superintendent for issues that are close to their heart. So looking at like, all right, what modalities are they talking in? Do they want me to use hip hop? Are they using photography? Are they using journalism? Mm -hmm. How can we support them in developing those kinds of literacies mm -hmm. and you know break down barriers for them to you know get in the way of them actually conveying their view of what they want to change to mm -hmm. the powers that be? Well, so that cool. so yeah, I got some grant funding to start that project next fall, mm -hmm. and I'm always looking out for other ways that just like. Disrupt well, the system from the inside. In. I'm gonna have to pull you in because our teen social justice program. We need to that's, up. Yeah, yeah, we need, yeah. Big, that's what the whole thing. So we need people like you, and we need people from the community. So we're trying to get into the middle schools, mm -hmm. and yeah. So and we need to be training these young folks exactly. to take over. I'm like, that's, put myself that's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. teen social justice, co cultivating future leaders. We right. have to. We have to create a way to where the youth can carry on and they're not forgotten. One of the things that I've noticed when I jumped into activism, and I didn't, you know, when you live in your everyday life, I didn't realize it was such a generational gap to where the elders and the youth wasn't connected like that anymore. And some of the history was being lost, especially like here in Athens. Mm -hmm. Athens has a lot of history. And uh, when we had the hip hop awards, we started realizing people that live, born, raised in Athens, never, some people never went to Morton Theater. Right. And historically, it was started by a black man. Right. You know, so... Those things are important. We gotta keep the youth engaged. So, yeah. what made you uh, make that transition from artist, student to politics? Because when I first met you, I was, you know, one of my favorite spots. I seen you in World Famous and that fro and that girl in the book. And and at that time, I wasn't even an activist. I'm walking around doing photos, trying to hip hop. I'm like, she need to be in a hip hop photo shoot, girl. You know. And yeah. um, I think you. I think we met at my second show I ever had. 
I think it was your first. I, no, I think we got you on the oh, oh, yeah, 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 we, we got, got you on the first, first show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you was, and I remember it was, um, I go back to my... Yeah. <laughs> back to my <laughs> back to right. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we have come so far, because I think when we first met, I don't think neither one of us were doing the act of this thing. Yeah. Um, so what changed? Like, I'm, what changed? Well, I, you know, I grew up with, like, activist leanings in my family, and my mother was a really strong proponent of, you know, electoral politics. She got me involved in the Obama campaign. But I kind of fell off when I got older just because I didn't feel like my voice mattered a lot. But when, you know, after the election in 2016, and my friend Tommy started running for county commissioner, and we got talking about hip-hop and politics and, like, some of the intersections there in terms of, like, leadership qualities of both rappers and MCs and like activists or politicians. Uh, through a lot of conversations with them, I came to see like, yo, I can do this. I can be out there and like I have something to say that's important. And I have the ability as, as an MC to bring people together, to motivate people to action that I need to be applying to the political sphere more. Wow. And so yeah, yeah. I did that. Got I'll out there and did props. it. I give you props. You brave because I know people are like, you should do it. I'm like, ah. You're crazy. Like it's a scary thing. It really is, and it takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of courage because you're really putting yourself out there and you're willing to put yourself out there for the benefit of the community. But it, I'm telling you, as brave as I am, that was something I was like, ah, I don't know if I, that's something that I want to do. So definitely, you rock for that one. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. Um, Appreciate that. So I want to ask you this: yes. Do you believe that um, the voting system is corrupt? Do you think that the voting system in Georgia especially is corrupt? Do you think black votes matter or are they really trying to suppress the black vote? I do believe that our current system of voting is structured in a way that limits participation. Mm -hmm. Anything from voter ID laws to really broader public policy issues that just limit people's access to all kinds of ways of engaging their community and like being civically engaged. Anything from the lack of access to affordable child care to lack of access to transportation, the way that the wage system sets people up to be working all the time so they don't value or don't see themselves as like having the energy or capacity to be civically engaged. All these things, I mean, they suppress life and, and in, in that they suppress the, our ability to participate in democracy. Yeah. So I think that in Georgia in particular, to add to that, there has been some some sneaky shit. <laughs> so I was like, shit. there's some fish shit going on. Yeah, it's like, it's like, an, extra, right. it's like an extra layer of like really trying to disenfranchise folks. I'm like, there's something that going is, on. Yeah. I'm like, listen, you don't have to be a political expert to see that something ain't right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's something yeah. that's wrong with, you know, but the one thing I will say with you, locally, I do believe in, I would say the local process, political process more because it seems like you can like I'm sitting right here at a commissioner. It's more hands on. You go up to the mayor commission office right. and I saw what was it? You won by thirteen? Yes. Thirteen. See, I remember thirteen votes. Yeah. So that was that when I see things like that it kind of um makes me believe again that it that maybe the system it, it might be broke some places, but it can work, but we have to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. At the local level where you can have that personal touch with the community. Mm -hmm. Really get out and meet every single person. Yeah. That like who's affected by the policy that you want to advance. I think that kind of like grassroots organizing, yeah, I do have faith in it still, even if at the higher tiers of government there's some sneaky shit going. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sneaky shit. Um, so where do you see yourself about I would say three years from now? Oh Lord. Do you plan on being the president of <laughs> Of what? <laughs> of what? The president of what? Nice. Okay. <laughs> Where do we see, where, where, where do you see yourself three years from now? So hopefully I'll be wrapping up my dissertation research and wrapping up my PhD. Mm -hmm. And um, like you mentioned, really, you know that I just want to use that to continue to go out in the community speak, to teach, to educate, to uplift, um, and whatever that looks like. You know, I just kind of fit in the cracks wherever I need to go, wherever I need to be in that regard. Um, three years from now, I will have to run for re-election 2020. 2000. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm currently serving out the rest of Harry Sims' term. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you're going to have to do that. Uh, so I will have, okay. yeah. Okay. So I had a special election. I'll have to do a regular election 2020. Once re-elected, I'll continue the work 
of, you know, the, the, it's been a long time in the making, yeah. the city that we have now. It's yeah. going to be a long time in the making to yeah. fix this. And so it's not going to happen, happen overnight. Yeah. And yeah. You have to keep certain people in place. Yeah, there needs to be some happen. continuity. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I intend to stay. Um, and so those are at least two things that I know for sure. Let's see what happens with music. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What about the music? I mean... You love the music. The I've music. Seen, that's how... I mean... I ain't gonna lie, you know, I tell people you might start out into music, but it might be something bigger that evolves out, out of it, you know, mm -hmm. from being an artist, you know, right. so, so is it, that's what it's becoming for you, or you can't say it, what is it? Well, musically? I think that the musical and political sides of my life continue to advance each other. In gaining political office, there's now a wider platform for me to share my views musically, because more people are interested in what I have to say. On the flip side, I'm able to bring more people into the political process because I'm an artist. I can speak to them on like a level they understand because everybody loves music. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how if those they'll continue to like help each other grow. If at some point they'll come to limit each other, but I'm just going with the flow. I'm not trying to push anything in any particular direction. Like become a superstar. I just wanted to serve the purpose of like inspiring people, empowering people. Engaging people and to, and to like crit critically reflect about their lives and their community. So, as long as he's wow. doing that, I'm good. Say the last piece. I, mean, I never heard too many people say that critically reflect on their lives and their community. That's big. Critically reflect on their lives. Take that moment and be like, hmm. That's, we don't do that. We don't have time. To, we're on this phone and and life is moving. Yeah, we distract ourselves because yeah. it's painful to do. Yeah, and then when, sometimes when you reflect on those things, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow yeah. as well. Yeah. To like, this is the condition, this is the this circumstances is where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame them. I, I used to be there. I'm just trying to be a part of the process in some way. Mm -hmm. So after we, tr we went out and we were knocking on doors, trying to get people to vote, I got cussed out about two times. Mm -hmm. Like, vote for what? So, right. what advice would you give to our people to get involved and vote? So, I think the framing of that question suggests that black folks should come out and vote, regardless of who's on the ballot or whether they're saying one. Potentially. Potentially. What I would say, the first thing that comes to my mind is not necessarily changing the, um, the minds of the folks, but changing the hearts and the vigor of the politicians who are running to make sure that they are running on bold progressive ideas that are actually going to bring meaningful substantive change to these communities and they're communicating those ideas of change in terms that are that mean something to those communities so like not just talking about the same old talking points or using the same old ways to try to change things because we've seen you know democrats republicans whoever these people these we remain disillusioned because it has never actually brought meaningful change and so I would say that let's talk to the politicians about the way they talk to us. Mm -hmm. And once they bring us some like valuable ideas that we can believe in that finally are gonna like bear like meaningfully disrupt the systems that have just kept people down for centuries, they gotta fight for our vote. Yeah. We can't just give it to them. So basically you're saying don't vote unless you know what you're voting for, basically. Politicians, yeah. politicians yes. Politicians do better. Should just be do better to be voting. Do like, better. Yeah. yeah. Come up with yeah. some ideas that are fresh and bold and scary to some folks yeah. to, who hold power currently, and go out to these people and talk to them about it if you want us to vote for you. So stop asking for the vote unless you're going to go the extra mile. So there we have it. Um, Mariah, sign out. Okay, tell me where they can find you. You can find me on IG, Facebook, under my rap moniker as Lingua Franca, L-I-N-Q-U-A, F-R-A-N-Q-A, or um, you can find me on Facebook, Mariah Parker for uh, Brian Parker County Commissioner, Mariah for Athens, or you can just look me up. I'm on the city website. You got my phone number, email address. Hit me up. Now. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. You can hit my line. That's what's up. When's the next show? My next show is New Year's Eve at the 40 Watt with Kishibashi. Oh, Kishibashi. Make sure y'all get up there. Mariah at the 40 Watt signing out. Thank you for tuning in to Mobile Speaks.